Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to Funky Monkey MMA. Welcome to another edition of the Funky Monkey MMA Radio. I am Rob Mead. Today joined by my guest co-host, Kim Sturdivant. How you doing today, bud? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How's everything with you? It's going great, man. It's going great. Uh, today we got on the show Ultimate Fighter Season 7 veteran. He has also fought for Bellator, and he holds a 13-2 and professional record. Uh, Luke Zacharich, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great, man. How are you guys? Doing awesome, man. Doing awesome. So I wanted to ask you, Luke, because uh, I know you run Ronin Training Center here in Columbus, Ohio. You know, uh, what what made you originally want to get into opening your own school and coaching and teaching? <laughs> Honestly, man, I never really wanted to. Uh, you know, it's not like it's something that I set out to do. Basically, it was just uh, we were put in a position, basically, that um, you know I, I was training with uh, with a my jiu-jitsu coach at the time, and he ended up moving. So it was one of those things where we were just going to start our own small little jiu-jitsu gym. And, you know, one thing led to another, and a little jiu-jitsu gym turned into a small jiu-jitsu gym with a Muay Thai, you know, Muay Thai room and stuff like that. And before you know it, we've, like, kind of morphed this place and completely exceeded our expectations and turned it into a, uh, you know, pretty big. And over a short period of time, it's been fairly successful here in Ohio. So uh, it's nothing we ever really set out to do, but, you know, once we started going with it, we set some pretty high goals for us, and, and uh, you know, they're all starting to kind of come to fruition a little bit. Right on. So uh, how was it that you originally got involved in the sport? Oh, man, it was kind of by chance. You know, I uh, I played football for a brief period of time in college. That didn't work out. And uh, I just kind of missed that competitiveness a little bit, you know, so... I always stayed active. I lifted weights, and, you know, I played on the club lacrosse team at Bowling Green for a little bit. And uh, I started boxing, like, my junior year in college a little bit. So I started boxing, and, you know, next thing you know, I'm training with some wrestlers just, you know, because I was lifting with them, and I started wrestling with it, uh, with uh, some of the guys. that One was going to Ohio State, one was going to Duke, and then I moved back to my hometown, and there were, I met a kid that's a uh, – a, he was a pro fighter at the time. So I started doing jiu-jitsu with him, and I kind of, you know, had a little bit of a knack for it. So he took me up to Dan Severns, and the rest is kind of history at that point. So oh, it's, it's been fun Severance? so far, man. Yeah, I, li- I used to live in Dan's gym for a year, man. <laughs> so wow. I lived in a bunk bed actually inside of his gym. So I, that's where I really wow, got my awesome. start. And yeah, it's a it's a cool experience thinking back on it. You know, I never really thought much about it at the time, but now that uh, you know things have have kind of this has engulfed my life over the last you know eight nine years. I, I look back and it's one of my like really fond memories being able to spend time with Dan and really get to know him as a as a person and as a coach and get to re- really learn from the guy. You know what I mean? And I was very fortunate to have someone like that around early in my career. So would you say Dan is kind of kind of your biggest inspiration uh you know like not necessarily you know i have a lot of people that have inspired me along the way um dan was definitely uh that that figure when i first started out that really kind of taught me the basics and then uh i was down at, at rich or i'm sorry george Gurgel's gym where rich franklin was you know when he was in the peak of his his time you know rich is the kind of guy that really uh set that fire and inspired me not just not just from his abilities in the ring and stuff like that, but the way he carried himself outside and stuff. So he was just a, an all-around good person, and I really tried to model myself and, you know, kind of try to be like Rich and carry myself like Rich for the most part. Okay, right sounds on. like that, that teacher instinct definitely came out in Rich and trying to take you take you under his wing, so to speak. I, yeah, I was really fortunate because, you know, I was, you know, a big body for him. I was right about the same size as he was. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you're his drilling partner, you spar with him. You know, I wasn't the only guy in there sparring with him, but there was plenty of, plenty of other guys. But I got a lot of one-on-one time with him when we were in the gym. And, you know, I really kind of – he really helped me take my game to the next level, basically. Speaking of that Finch fight, uh, I was there when it happened, man. Just, you know, seeing the support that you had in that crowd was amazing. Like, you know, the the amount of people that showed up to watch you fight is just it's insane. And that's gotta be, you know, a good feeling, right? Oh, when I fought Marcus? 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, any any time that I fought in Columbus, you know, these last, let's see, two out of my last three fights have been in Columbus. And, um, you know, I have a, a pretty good following here. And it's not just Columbus people either. You know, people travel from all over the place, northeast Indiana, northwest Ohio, um, kind of all over the place. I have some family that comes in. But, I mean, there's, you know, maybe over 200 people have came to the last two Columbus fights, basically, that I've actually sold tickets to and multiple others that just show up. So it's uh, it's stressful and it's cool all in one, man. Right on. So uh, are you training with any other teams right now, or are you just training at Ronin for now? I mean, I really don't have any other reasons to train with anyone else at this time. Like, I'll go down to Cincinnati and Kentucky from time to time and train with Rob Radford. And uh, Nathan Fitch at Son of Siam. Rob's kind of bounces around to a couple of different places, but he's, you know, been my boxing coach for years. But I work with a couple of really good coaches around here and, and then the guys that I have in my gym too, which, you know, I, I think everybody knows who Vitor is at this point. And we've got some guys, you know, Nikolai Tim is just a really good wrestler. And then I started working with James Dominguez a little bit before the last fight and I really enjoy working with them. So, you know, it's uh, all around there's there's some really good coaches that, you know, people might have heard of or might never have heard of around here. And then there's guys like, you know, Rob Radford down in Cincinnati who's trained some of the, the top guys in the world basically. So I try to mix it up a little bit, but about ninety five percent of my training happens right at Ronan. Absolutely. Okay. What is what is your favorite aspect of the MMA game? Uh, honestly, man, it's tough to say. I've gone through so many different phases. You know, I used to be a, strictly a striker with defensive jiu-jitsu and defensive wrestling. And, you know, now, um, you know, my jiu-jitsu game's really, like, you know, I've taken a turn. I've put a lot of time on it because that was my really weak point when I uh, when I was younger in my career. And now, I mean, my jiu-jitsu is probably the strongest, you know, aspect of my, my MMA game. But I really enjoy the, the transition stuff because it's one of those things that it's really tough to get good at it. So, and there's really, you know, it takes kind of a a more experienced guy to really be able to mix your striking with your wrestling and your grappling, and that's what I really try to get a lot better at. Right so, yeah, transitions are definitely very important. Yeah, they're you know? important, but, you know, it's one of those things that not a lot of people know how to train them properly. You know what I mean? Or not that they don't know how to train them properly, but there's so many guys that's like, okay, today we're doing jiu-jitsu, and tomorrow we're doing striking. And, you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things that, that we really work on mixing the two together. And, you know, Josh Williams is, is helping coach over at Ronin right now, and he's pretty good at his transition game. And he's bringing some different things to the table that, you know, I know I wouldn't necessarily do on my own, but kind of learning some of the best things from Josh's game has really helped me too. Absolutely. So uh, what exactly would you say it is that separates you from every other competitor that steps in there? It's really tough to say, man. You know what I mean? Like, I, uh, I, I've i got a lot of experience. You know what I mean? I've been, you know, I, I haven't necessarily, you know, I guess fighting in Bellator and Puff, you know what I mean, are kind of a big deal. But, um, you know, I've I've been in there with some of the best guys in the world in the gym. You know what I mean? And, and that constant training and just being able to do this, like, it, it takes a a different type of person, you know what I mean, to fight. But there takes a totally different type of person to be able to do this for a long, extended period of time and, and really stick with it and not just do it for, like, you know, a year here and then maybe another year and then I'm going to take six months off and stuff like that. Like somebody that can stick with it. And that's when you really start doing good. It's just when you've had had the time to really, you know, start to understand the game. You know, like you might think you understand it, but, you know, you continually train for the next five years and you're going to have a whole different perspective on, you know, the sport, basically. Absolutely. So if uh, if you could get anyone in there, whether it be, you know, a fighter or anyone, anyone dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, to fight? Yeah. Oh, man, I have no idea, dude. <laughs> I would just rather have somebody pick them for me. You know what I mean? It's one of those things that's tough to tough to think about somebody that you really want to fight. But, you know, like, there's, there's one, of those, one of those things where you just really like to fight somebody that's, like, you know, a world-class fighter. You know what I mean? Like, before I'm done, I would really like to say, you know, I'd fought a former world champion or a world champion or, or something along those lines. You know what I mean? Like, just so you can look back and, and really, you know, 
I, I don't know, just be able to tell your grandkids someday or something like that, that you fought one of the best guys in the world at the time or like a legend of the sport or something. I think it would be really cool. Absolutely. So what is something that you that you kind of want to re, be remembered for? I know you said just that you wanted to be able to, you know, fight fight one of those, you know, high-level fighters, you know, that's kind of remembered right now or, or during our time, but what do you want to go down as being remembered for? I uh, did. You know, it's it, it's one of those things that I, I really would just, you know, like to be remembered for my work ethic and, you know, the character and stuff like that. It's one of those things that, you know, it's it's hard to say because I'm not, you know, currently I'm not at the, the pinnacle of the sport. You know, like I'm not in the UFC or I haven't, you know what I mean, been there or anything like that. So, I just really want to be remembered as far as, you know, what I can contribute to the Columbus community and stuff like that with the guys here in the gym. You know, the, the sport's really changing and it's taking off here in Columbus. And, you know, hopefully I can I can get there myself. But if I can't, I want, you know what I mean, I want to build guys up to the point where they're there. You know what I mean? So pass my knowledge down and really, like, be looked at as a guy that helped grow the sport in Central Ohio. Right on. So uh, thus far, what would you consider to be your greatest accomplishment in the sport? Uh, you know what, man? I really don't feel like I've accomplished, you know, anything, like, too great. You know what I mean? Like, I've uh, I've had a couple big opportunities, and I've came up short. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't feel like there's been anything that's been this, this huge accomplishment. You know, that's why I still am training so hard. I'm training every single day. You know what I mean? And, uh, I'm still searching for that great accomplishment. In my eyes, I really haven't accomplished anything great. You know, I've gone out and I've won a good amount of fights, and, you know, I've lost a couple here and there. And, uh, you know, I feel like that great accomplishment for me is still, you know, it's still to come, basically. Right on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so how exactly at... do you... Oh, go ahead, Kim. No, go ahead. You got it. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you know, how do you push yourself on those days to train, like when, when you're just body's beat up and you're, you know, mentally just exhausted? How do you push yourself to continue? <laughs> Honestly, man, if if you came down to uh, if you came down to the gym and were, were training there, like you can't have those off days at at the gym, you know, especially like uh, over on the jujitsu side, and and even you know, there's some kids that we've got in the gym that are just, you know, phenomenal, like, strikers. And we've got one of the top, like, jiu-jitsu teams in the whole Midwest, not even in Ohio or in the Columbus area or anything like that. So it's one of those things you have to bring your A game or you're going to get your ass beat every single day. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things. If you don't really want to be there, I highly suggest, you know, not going in. <laughs> right on. Uh so how exactly do you spend your time when you're not preparing for the fights? As far as my free time? Yeah. I have a, a little baby at home right now. So my my whole free time, if you want to call it free time, is spent with her. So, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, like, uh, the way that you look at yourself. You know, Rob and I were actually talking on the way here. You know, I had something come up with her. I almost had to miss the interview or thought I might have to. But, um, you know, beforehand it was – you know, train and rest and work. And now it is work and train and that's it. And take care of the baby, basically. You know what I mean? So I spend time with my wife. That's really all that, I, that I've been doing these days. Right on. So you, you talked about your last fan day. I'm sorry, what's that, guys? So, um, so you were kind of talking about your fan base a little bit earlier, and now just about your family. You know, how how supportive has this? How has that support system, you know, been when, you know, or how has it affected you as on your on your path within MMA? In the past, I mean, my family has always been there. My wife's always been a huge supporter. My parents have been giant supporters since day one. You know what I mean? Like. They don't miss fights. They're always there. They're they're there to you know, especially Leah. She's here to help me. You know, she'll she supports me being in the gym and everything along those lines. And you know, like I've been really active since the baby's been born. You know, she's five and a half months now, and I've fought twice already just in the time since she's been born. So um, I've been you know more active in the last year, I guess, than you know I had that two year layoff because of the injuries and you know opening a second restaurant and stuff. So. Um, 
you know, if I didn't have that support system around me, not just, you know, at home with my wife and my family, but, you know, at the gym and at the restaurants and stuff like that, there's no way I could even do this. So I'm really lucky, man. I'm fortunate that I have so many good people around me. So what's more challenging, MMA or running a restaurant? <laughs> uh, the MMA part's easy, man. You know what I mean? You've got different personalities involved in everything. So they kind of, you know, they both have their pluses and minuses, but it's all fun when it all comes down to it. Right on. So tell us a little bit about, uh, I believe it's Mellow Mushroom, is that right? Yeah. Tell us a little about, uh, you know, about what they're about and how you got involved in that. Uh, you know what, man? Like, I was... Uh, I was fighting professionally at, you know, for, let's see, I was down in Cincinnati for four and a half years at the time when we opened the first one, and we decided, it was kind of my brother's brainchild, and I was, uh, see, I just had to have my ACL operated on, I'd gone through, um, you know, a pretty serious neck injury, uh, torn quad, then I had the ACL tear, so I moved up here to Columbus, it was one of those things where I knew that, hey, it's time to start thinking about life after fighting, if this thing doesn't work out, so... Um, started the restaurant up. Like, my parents lived down in South Carolina, and there's a mellow mushroom down there. So my brother had uh, started looking into franchising and stuff like that, and we decided to do it as a family. And everyone kind of moved throughout, uh, you know, the the country, basically. I was bouncing all over the place. My parents were down in South Carolina. My sister was in South Carolina. My brother was here in Columbus. And we all had uh, kind of migrated back here and just kind of gave it a shot, you know, and it's been pretty successful so far. You know, we've got our second store open now, and we're working on the third store being built. So, um, you know, it's one of those things for me. It was, hey, i got to start thinking about life after fighting. Because I was at a point where it was really tough for me to get fights. Um, There weren't too many of them out there, and when it was possible, I mean, I was going through a lot of injuries. So, you know, you can't, uh, if if you're fighting professionally and that's your only source of income and you're injured and you can't fight, man, you're not making money. So uh, that's where I started really thinking about what was the next step in my life if this wasn't going to be here for me. Right on. So uh, what do you consider to be, like, the most embarrassing song? If someone went through your iPod, what would they find? What would you consider to be the most embarrassing <laughs> one on there? Dude, my uh, my wife and I share an iTunes account, so basically anything that comes up from her pop library, it's it's a little embarrassing. I don't want to play. I don't like to play my iPod or plug my phone in when we're at the gym because you never know what's going to come up if you hit that shuffle button. So uh, you get a bunch you of any uh, sports. I you know what man like, I I really like uh, you know Ohio State football, but. Um, outside of that, it's really tough to pay attention to it with as much MMA as on as much guys that, you know, between the MMA team and the jiu-jitsu team and as much as I compete or guys are competing that are around me, I, it's really tough. I don't follow anything, man. Like, I I pay attention to Brazilian jiu-jitsu and MMA and Ohio State football, basically. Right on. So, so uh, you have a 10 minutes. What's that? Go ahead. Do you have a... I'll go ahead, Tim. So, about 10 minutes before you're walking out to the fight, what's going on through your head during that moment? Uh, at that point, man, everything's clear. You know what I mean? It's 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 time to go. You know what I mean? For me, like, I, I don't get really nervous before fights or anything like that. Like, if there's any nerves, it's usually, you know, a couple weeks before and that last week or two of preparation and stuff along those lines. But it's really weird, man. Like, for me... Once uh, once I weigh in and, and, you know, you do that square off, everything kind of seems to fall into place. You know what I mean? Like, I've been doing it long enough and been around the sport that, um, you know, it's just go out there and do what you're trained to do and, and, you know, be careful right off the bat. You know, the worst thing to me is just to get in there and, and uh, you know, have the ref say go. Because after that, everything just kind of, you just go off that natural instinct and, and go in there and do what you're trained to do, basically. So I don't really... Uh, it, it's tough to say it's tough. I, I mean, have you either of you ever fought before? Yep. Uh, yeah, it, no, it, I have. It, it, yeah, it's just one of those things, man. Like, uh, some guys get super nervous. Some guys, you know, you couldn't even tell that they were going to go out there and fight. You know, everybody reacts to it different. For me, it's like I, when you ask me, I'm like trying to think. <laughs> I'm trying to sit here and think about 
you know, right before I walk out. And I honestly, man, it's like it, it's a blackout for me, basically. You know what I mean? It's just kind of you go into cruise control and you just do what you're supposed to do and do what I've been doing here for, you know, pretty fairly a decent amount of time, basically. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, i got to ask you, uh, you know, a lot of competitors and a lot of other athletes, they do visualization before they compete. Is that part of your game plan before the fight? Uh, you know, a little bit, man. Like, I think anybody, you know, you're going to play that fight through your head, you know, time and time again. Um, I mean, I do the whole way through training. You know, I think about, uh, you know, all the good things I can do, all the bad things I can do, all the bad things that can happen to me. You know, that's when the nerves come into play a little bit a couple weeks out from the fight. Um, you know, I have a mental picture of how it would ideally work out. You know, it usually never happens. <laughs> but... You know, yeah, I, I definitely uh, visualize my fight. I think about it, you know, the things that could happen, things that could go wrong and everything like that. So um, I, I feel like, you know, if you put yourself in that situation mentally, you know, a hundred times or however many times, like you should be able to deal with it when the situation arrives. Right on. So uh, we just have a new section of our show, and it's basically we're going to give you five fights uh from fights that are coming up, I believe it's there tomorrow. Uh, we're going to ask you five fights, and we're going to ask you to choose the winner. And at the end of the year, we're going to add up all the, you know, everyone up, and we're going to see who's the champion at this. Gotcha, so, uh, gotcha. First off, yeah, I wish I would have known, man. I would have prepared for this one. <laughs> <laughs> first up, we got uh, this going to be a hell of a fight, too, man. Carlos Condit versus Martin Campman. You know, on this one, I definitely would probably go with uh, I'd go with Condon on this one. He's on a he's on a hot streak in the fight that he, you know, in my mind, I'm trying to think the fights that he's had, but uh, you know, he's looked good when he's been out there, and even when he lost, you know, and I, wait, he yeah, he's only lost with the GSP recently, right? Yeah, I believe so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and it's not like he looked horrible doing it, you know what I mean? Like, so I'll definitely I'll go with Condon on that one. Right on. And we got uh, Cowboy Cerrone taking on Rafael Dos Anjos. I think uh, I think Cowboy takes the cake on that one, man. He's uh, he's very experienced. Um, you know, he's on a hot streak, dude. He's very confident in himself. I don't know how you couldn't take him, really. Absolutely. And then uh, we got Ultimate Fighter winner Kelvin Gast- uh, Gastelum taking on Brian Melanson. I don't know who Brian is. I saw Kelvin fight when he fought um, Uriah Hall, so I'll take Kelvin in that one. So no offense to Brian, I've just never seen him fight. So it's tough to pick a guy that uh, you know. Kelvin's a grinder, man. You know, it's one. Of, it's a tough fight for anybody, really, at that point. As long as you're matching up with somebody, you know, uh, a little bit, you know, newer to the newer to the UFC or something like that, no veterans, which I don't think Brian is. But I'll take Kelvin. Right on. And then we got uh, Court McGee taking on Robert Whitaker. I got—I uh, don't know who Robert Whitaker is, so I'll take Court McGee. He's a tough fight for anybody, man. He's really—he's uh, really unorthodox, and you know he's really tough in the clinch. He's got pretty good wrestling, so I'll go with Court on that one. Right off. And then we got a uh, Ultimate Fighter veteran Bubba McDaniel taking on Brad Tavares. I would probably—I trained with Bubba before. But after, you know, I've seen Tavares fight a couple times, and, you know, he's a pretty young kid. Bubba would probably take the experience on that one, but I'll go with Tavares on that one. The kid's, you know, freak athlete, hits really hard. So um, I know Bubba's got a good ground game, decent wrestling, but Tavares is just, I, I see a lot of potential in the kid. Right on. All right, Luke, we got about a few minutes left in the show, man. If you want to give a shout-out to your sponsors, your family, friends, or, you know, you want to promote anything, the floor is yours. Yeah, guys, uh, thank you first and foremost for having me on uh, Ronin Training Center. Anyone in the Columbus area, you know, come down and check it out. All my teammates, all my coaches, everybody, thank you. Uh, 40 Thieves Clothing, these guys have sponsored me for a very, very long time. So uh, they make awesome stuff. It's uh, very different, you know what I mean, in, in the MMA world. So, uh, you know, check them out. I think they're at 40ThiefsClothing.com. So that's, uh, you know, about everybody, man. If I miss somebody, sorry, but, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate it. Anytime, Luke. We'd love to have you on again, man. 
Sounds good, guys. Have a nice night. We'll see ya. You, you too, bro. Take care. And, uh, uh, real quick, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, KOBKFighter.com. Check them out. They got some awesome ten dollar t shirts, some badass gi shorts, and uh, you can go ahead and like them on Facebook as well. Check us out on Facebook over Facebook dot com backslash the Funky Monkey MMA. Follow us on Twitter. We're also on iTunes, YouTube, Blog Talk Radio, Stitcher Radio. And we're trying to get on some other platforms right now. And if you're interested in sponsoring the show, you can email us over at Funky Monkey MMA at Gmail dot com. Kim, is there anyone like you'd like to give a shout out to? Um, yeah, just give a shout out to my teammates over at Gladiator BJJ. Um, anybody listening in? Um, Q five. Um, so for hooking me up with some some nice supplement. And you know, you guys, I'm just looking forward to speak, to getting on here and actually doing my own interview with you guys next week. Absolutely, man. Can't wait for that. You know, I, I thank you for coming on today and helping me out do this today, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. And uh, where can people find you at if they want to? Oh, you can find me on Facebook.com backslash Kim, K Y M, Sturdivant, S T U R D I V A N T, B J J. Um, that's probably the best place to find me. Or Kryptonite1911 on Twitter. Right come through and check me out. Give me a follow. Right on. Well, thanks for coming on again today, man. We appreciate it. And uh, this wraps up another episode of the Funky Monkey MMA Radio. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we have Stephanie Skinner from the XFC joining us. And we're out. Have a great night. You're listening to Funky Monkey MMA.